Clapping, man! <laughs> you, are, you are so good. You Thanks, are so man. fun Thank to you. watch. Welcome, Larnell Lewis, back to the Drumio Studios. Hey, people! It took us a while to get the schedule <laughs> in, but we finally got it. He he is all over the place. After this, you said you're going on uh, tour with Snarky Puppy. I am in Germany. Yeah, it's crazy. And uh, he's out here with us today to give us. Uh, this is a kind of a free online event and then for edge members we have um tomorrow which is tuesday and wednesday and we're going to go a little bit more in depth to, oh. in those lessons as well and so it's going to be a fun time having you out here i know i'm here as a student just as much <laughs> i am as a host so i love uh, uh just chatting with you about drum stuff and, and the things that your your approach because it is very different i think um 
this is why I always say, like, what separates, like, you know, the, the good drummers from the pros is, like, you seem to have more levels and more, like, layers to, <laughs> to your playing. And, like, you know, whereas, like, a normal drummer will have, like, one, two, three, or small, medium, large, you'll have, like, ten different things. And you can just kind of, like, go in between those. And so I love picking, uh, picking the brain of a pro like yourself. Thank so. you. Yeah. My brain is, <laughs> my brain is yours to pick. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, this is the... First in a gospel drumming yeah. series, uh, this is number one. And so you basically, he's actually prepared a track, and um, you're going to, that was the track you just played Yeah, too. the last track is the, the track yeah. I just played. And so this is all kind of about, for, for you drummers who want to uh, play in church, like I grew up playing in church, I, I think my first church thing was when I was 16. Nice. Yours was probably two. <laughs> 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 but, uh, you know, a lot of us play in church, and there's so many, it, it takes a, a different mindset and a different uh, way of playing than if you were to play in a club or you were to play in like a, any, any sort of, every venue kind of requires that. And so I think it's really cool that we get to touch on it here in Drumio and especially with a guy like Larnell who seems to have it all figured out. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, still learning myself. You know? Cool. One cool question. Are we going to be able to get that, uh, that track you just played for like the drumless version? Can they play um, I'm working on it. I'm okay. working on it with a bunch of producer guys. Uh, we're going to see what we can do to get you guys some play-alongs that actually cool. will allow you to exercise and stretch at home uh, over gospel music. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay, and so for those of you here, um, and whether you're watching it in the archives or here, there is a PDF below. We didn't display it because the PDF is for all three gospel lessons that we're doing, and so you just go ahead and kind of download that package, and you can follow along there. But let's, uh, let's uh, just jump right into it. Um, so we're, we're going through the song Holy, Holy, Holy. Mm -hmm. And that's an arrangement you put together? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's an arrangement of a, a, a hymnal, a, a song from a, a hymn book called Holy, Holy, Holy. Mm -hmm. And I guess through these, these next few days, uh, if you join me or join us, uh, we'll be going through a couple of standard songs that you'll, you'll encounter while playing in church and just kind of talk about the approach and talk about what to do, what not to do, uh, when to do, what to do, those kinds of things, because it's, it's definitely about timing, no pun intended, and uh, understanding what the music is about, what it's for, what you're trying to do, and the atmosphere you're trying to create. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll get into a couple of those things right now with Holy, Holy, Holy. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Just go. I'm <laughs> just letting you go, man, because I'm here as a student too. So, so, so we'll jump in. Um, okay. You'll see the beginning of the song starts off with a very basic pattern. Um, for you guys who have your sheet, it'll actually be number one. Okay. All right, basic first pattern. And I'm just using cross stick. Um, actually, basic pattern verse pattern one and two, they happen within the same verse. So the first half is, as you could see on the chart. Um, cross stick on B4, and then cross stick on two and four for the second half. Um, I'll play that for you, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. All right, so that's basic pattern number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, we'll put the cross stick on beat two, as well as beat four. There we go. All right, so I chose those two for the beginning of the song, specifically basic pattern number one, because 
out the gate with a song that starts off as delicately as that. You can hear a piano, you know, a little bit of organ, a very nice, lush, like full sounding intro, but it's not big. So you don't want to come in with anything in terms of the, the bass pattern for that section of the song. You don't want to be too abrasive. You don't want to be too um, overbearing and you want to be sensitive. Um, for me, what I found with playing in church is that it's important that you're sensitive. You're sensitive to what's happening at the moment. You're sensitive to what's happening in the music. You're sensitive to whoever's leading and you're, you're listening to what's going on because um, as people feel it, they might you know, rise and fall with dynamics. So I chose uh, to start off the song with only Crossstick on beat four because I felt that playing it on beat four, like one, two, three, one, I felt that that would still allow for forward motion to happen in the song. Um, if I didn't play anything, I would probably play hi-hat on two and four sometimes. But for the sake of that song and that particular example, I felt that cross stick on four uh, made the most sense to leave it as open as possible without sacrificing the forward motion. And then when you need to take it up a notch, you can add the cross stick on beat mm -hmm. two. And when you when you're first hear a song like I always would think okay I don't want to just like go all out in the beginning because the song's going to sound like this yeah. like one level I always like to have you know some sort of dynamic think about the long term of the song absolutely and that's where I always like used a ton of cross stick but um, is, do you think that uh, in gospel music in general you use more of that cross stick type feel than uh, than in, in other styles of music necessarily I wouldn't say more than other styles, I would just say that um, how I came across it was inside of gospel yeah. music, and I found that approach to be effective in other styles. Yeah. So you might see something similar to that in pop music, mm -hmm. um, you know, where sometimes they might do cross stick on beat two and a snare on beat four. Yeah, that's true. So you'll find that even with gospel music, like it shares, you know. Um, similar approaches to other styles in terms of how to create that dynamic mm -hmm. flow or how to pace yourself for the long run. Yeah. Um, can you also talk about the hi-hat dynamics you're doing in that part? Because you're doing mm -hmm. a few different things and, uh, and exact, exactly why you chose that pattern mm -hmm. as opposed to just... I mean, I probably would have simplified it because I couldn't play it as good as that. But uh, <laughs> I, I would have just done the straight eight. Man, um, what I would say for the hi-hat pattern, again, it's, it's about um, what I've learned over time from playing different styles of music is yeah. that you can create um, the ebbs and flows or the dynamics. You can allow dynamics to move up and down or the aggression of a song to move up and down or the forward motion to move forward or to the song to feel like it's resting yeah. based on how many subdivisions you're putting in, yeah. right? So I wanted it to to have this kind of like... Huh, right. To, That's a, to, to, exactly. It's kind of like the wheel turning, right? Yeah, I never even thought about it like that. Rather than... Yeah, it just, it just creates space and, yeah. and I found that when you do something like that, like the melody can breathe more. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, the other players have a chance to kind of fill up those spaces mm -hmm. and do whatever it is that's necessary or to do nothing at all. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So should we move on to the next Yeah, section? let's move to the next part. So um, did a nice uh, pop ballad fill, um, you know, snare and tongs to take me to the ride cymbal. Uh, one thing I had to learn was when to go to the ride cymbal. Um, it is possible to go to the ride cymbal too early. Mm -hmm. It's also possible to go to the ride cymbal too late. Yeah. And um, it's all dependent on what's happening in the music. Uh, before I play the panel, pattern, I will explain that I mostly used the, uh, the body of the ride cymbal before utilizing the bell, which I saved for later on, so I had somewhere to go again building it up in levels. So I'll get into the basic pattern yeah. for the, for the, I guess you could say it's the second time around. So ride and snare, this would be number three.
All right, so that was number three. Yeah. Like I said, and what was happening there, same as the hi hat, I was uh, choosing what beats were going to be strong and weak. So again, still creating that that flow, that creating that space within that forward flow. Um, I'm a lot more aggressive with my snare drum, and I'm just accenting. At, as soon as I hit the bell, just like the edge of the hi hat, accenting quarter notes and the other 16th notes were played with the tip of the stick, yeah. similar to the body of the rat. Yeah, so you get two different timbres. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, cool. And uh, from, let's say every song like kind of starts in the high and you want to have this build, and I know it's, it's common in every song, so it's hard to say, oh, it's just gospel drum. <laughs> we were talking about this before. <laughs> but I know uh, from, from growing up playing in church that you want to have that, um, even though it's almost more so in songs, there's less of them start really heavy and, and stuff like that. But from the hi-hat, is it always to the ride or majority of times to the ride? Or sometimes do you bring it up in a different way? Um, yeah, sometimes it really just depends on your situation. Yeah. Um, it depends on the arrangement. It depends on what it is that you're trying to do. So um, let's take that pattern, for example. Um, let's take pattern number two. Okay. Yeah, so cross stick on tune four. Okay. What I'll do is, uh, to bring it up another level... Um, I'll play snare, and then I might go into something like an open hi-hat thing okay. eventually near the end. So we'll see how it, it shapes up okay. towards the end. Here we go. Nice. So, I, yeah, I hope you guys heard that. It's a very cool demonstration to hear you took that one pattern, mm -hmm. and it just slowly went up. And this is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning, <laughs> levels, right? <laughs> He's got more levels. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right way. Have you seen that Seinfeld? And then I'm going to build levels? Do you no, watch Seinfeld? I haven't seen it. Oh, oh my okay, gosh, forget I need it then. to see it. <laughs> Somebody send me that clip, please. Send it to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, one guy's Rhythm45 says, I've got five levels. That's good. All right, man. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's continue on then yeah. through the track. And for those watching, um, get your questions in now. If you're watching this live, uh, there's already a lot coming in. So I would like to get to everyone if possible. Yeah, more and more and more. Yeah. Oh, as, much, <laughs> as much as you can, guys. It'd be yeah. cool. Cool. Uh, don't forget, I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is public, and so... Yeah, it's, okay. Yeah. So you'll have to sign up, and <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to find it, guys. Larnell, the salesman, is here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway. For, for 14 easy payments of $1.99. <laughs> exactly. 
exactly. <laughs> you too can join the fun. <laughs> anyway, let's not playing the fool. Okay. Um, so I guess we're gonna move on to pattern number four. You're probably wondering where is the bass drum on beat one? Um, that is something that I learned in term, uh, I learned inside of church, and um, I've heard in other contexts um, as a way of creating a floating type feeling. It's usually a drum pattern that you will use or that I would use in a situation where we are, for those uh, instrumentalists out there that actually play um, a chordal instrument or you know your theory, usually hanging on the four chord. Um, so if you're in the key of C, you're hanging on an F major seven, F major seven, and maybe hitting on the sharp 11, you never know. So all the theory people out there. Um, that floating feeling is really nice when you're sitting on a chord like that or a nice progression like that where it just kind of turns around and keeps turning on itself. Um, if you flip back to the track, you'll hear what was going on. So I'll play that pattern. This is pattern number four. Um, it has a little bit of a, a bossa samba mm -hmm. kind of feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, almost similar to, if you guys listen to, uh, I guess it's Billy Joel, the Don't Go Change Into Fire. What's the name of the song again? Oh, man, I don't, don't know. Don't go changing to try and please me. You know? <laughs> My wife's going to laugh at me for that one. Anyway, so I'll play this pattern. You guys look for that song. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Liberty DeVito on drums. So here it is. Number four. Okay. Yeah, I love that off the offbeat hi hat. Yeah, there. I think that adds like a huge element, and I think people really underutilize that mm -hmm. as adding or adding some a really cool element to their groove. And they just think, ah, oh, no one will hear it, so I'm not going to do it. But if you actually like give it a good stomp, yeah, if you kind of throw it in there, it, it, it within a pattern like that, it's exposed, um, or it just kind of sits really nicely in a way to again to keep the forward motion going. Mm -hmm. um, I could play the pattern without it. Yeah, Maybe we can cool just quickly to see. Back and forth, yeah, yeah A, B. Yeah, let's go for it. Here okay. we go. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, oh, I had something and I just lost it. I'm sorry. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> okay, so what's, what's, uh, what's next? And so, or why did you, I guess, so why did you go to, from that straight beat, something with backbeat two and four, mm -hmm. uh, to something with no, essentially no backbeat or yeah. different? Because I guess you're, you're considering the bass drum. Is, is yeah, I mean, the, the bass drum is now taking over the. The, it, the, to me, in that pattern, the bass drum is what makes it rest, right? Yeah. Four, one, two, boom. and the hi hat's kind of creating that. Boom, 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 one, boom, boom, like that forward motion, mm -hmm. and then the snare kind of dances around, which uh, the next pattern kind of gets into a little more of a dance between the ride and the. Yeah. I guess I'm just wondering, like, how would a how would a drummer know that to when to use this pattern? For me, I found out about it by listening to different styles of music. Okay. Um, but when to know, like, when is the time to use something like that? Um, experiment. I mean, you you I would normally use it when the music is coming down from a high, yeah. and uh, we've been really aggressive, like in that track, like I'm on the ride symbol, you know. 
and then start this time to float. So you just take your time and float once that, once that high energy section is complete or once you've moved on. Usually, like I said, um, hanging on what would be considered the four chord, um, C, D, E, F, F major, F major seven, F major nine, um, and whatnot, other extensions for people, again, that are into theory. But um, sometimes it might not be the time. Sometimes you need to revert back to the actual pattern, basic pattern number one. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if I could find that part of the song and maybe... Yeah, and be cool. Maybe to throw basic pattern number one back in there. Let's give it a go. Forgive me while I search. I see, yeah, it's interesting how both patterns work, so it's just a matter of making a musical decision yeah. on which one to, to yeah. actually use. And again, for the theory people out there, they're kind of hanging out on the one chord, yeah. if you're wondering. Um, but it, it just, it, it really depends on, again, the atmosphere. If it is that time to float, but to still allow the music to move forward, yeah. without doing a bunch of cymbal swells or just playing light time to inform the hi-hat, um, you can go there, or you could start playing two and four, two, three, four, one, two, drum fill, and boom, 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 Yeah, so it really is about your musical judgment at the moment. And like I said, uh, for me, I learned it by listening to you know different albums, but also experiencing in church what needed to happen, getting a lot of bad looks when I did the wrong thing at the wrong time, which is a lot about, it has a lot to do with the learning experience. That's overall, how you learn, you know? man, at these looks. Yeah. People yeah. are like, what yeah. did he just do? Yeah. You, go, you go there at the wrong time, or you get the ride right at the wrong time, and you get one of these. Yeah. Yeah. Lesson number one. <laughs> don't get one of these. You don't want that. So. Cool. cool. Okay. What uh, would be the next pattern? Ah, the next pattern. So we basically take that pattern up a notch. Um, we take it, I guess we could say, to level two of that pattern. So what's going to happen is, with my ride cymbal, I'm going to head back to that, to a faster 16th note, 32nd note, skip beat kind of thing. Um, just basically double the time. Yeah, just basically double doing. the time of yeah. the original hi-hat pattern. And... Um, I'm gonna add some floor tom in there. So, let's see how it goes. So, for me, I jump to that when I feel that 
the band is starting to percolate a little more and I do not want to compromise the general flow of the pattern. So you'll notice that the bass drum, the hi-hat stayed the same. I added a little more snare, maybe one more hit. Um, or maybe it was a little more aggressive with that hit and I added the floor tom to that. So to kind of, you know, strengthen the, what was happening on the bass drum basically. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> do you often replace the like the snare drum on count four or whatever with the floor tom, and do you feel that adds a lift, or is the same? Um, it really just depends. I mean, you know, depending on the sound of your toms, depending on the uh, amount of toms you have, depending on uh, what's happening in the music. Again, it's about musical judgment, but for me, when it comes to... I guess taking it up a notch or, or trying to maybe replace the floor tom or not yeah. play the floor tom on beat four. I might uh, add a couple of other tom hits, just like sprinkling them around yeah. that basic pattern. Yeah. And um, maybe if the bass player is doing something specific, I might echo it or I might do something yeah. that uh, complements. Cool. It's not exactly the same. <clears throat> And also I want to mention the the ride pattern that he was doing, just that simple technique of playing dun, 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 sh, that and then doubling it while keeping everything else the same is a r real challenge in um, just developing your note values, developing independence mm. between between your limbs and stuff. That's something I, I love doing. Um, I think it's like cool, because you can just kind of lift the song just by changing one small totally. element. Right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, we got to keep moving along because we're already going to, we have lots of questions, so. Okay. Um... Let me jump to, where are we at now? We're at number... Number six, I think? Yeah, we're at number six. So, so number six is another thing where, um, it's another lift where there's a bit more of a dance happening on the snare. I say dance because it's like light fluttering, you know, especially in the music, you're hearing the piano go and uh, the ride cymbal's going, so see what you can do with the snare. So let's jump to that, Okay. all right? And actually in sequential order, I'll start with number four, mm -hmm. then go to five and then I'll end up on number six. Yeah. Cool? Cool. Here we go. Yeah, one thing I like to do at the end is just like get you, to, if possible, just to kind of play through all the modes of yeah. rotation without the music, so we can kind of hear um, all these different kind of um, places that you're taking this feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Uh, the last thing I'll hit, um, you guys are looking at it. It says complex fill. Um, this is number seven. All right. Now I use this uh, more so in that section prior to this um, bass drum on two and four feel that we were just covering in the last few minutes. Um, when playing this particular fill, as you can see the beginning part of the bar, so the first two beats, or it's more of an actual beat, and then the actual fill happens on the last two beats of mm -hmm. that bar. So um, I'll play the full bar as you see it on your page, and then I'll actually just repeat that two beat yeah. pattern so over okay. and over again a couple times. Here we go.
Oh, I love that, Phil. You know what I like about it? Is last time you were here, one of the things you said is just, uh, and it's, it hasn't gone out of my mind since then, is like, <laughs> even with, with all your fills, try and keep that backbeat going. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing I noticed about that. It's like, I could still groove. I still had that feel. It didn't like, it wasn't all of a sudden like, Mm-hmm. Where to go? And then we're back. <laughs> yeah, you don't right? want to do that. <laughs> you might, you might get one of the looks, you know. Yeah, especially I think that's even more so in a, in a church setting because um, I don't know. I was at a thing with my, you know, maybe I shouldn't bring this. Up. <laughs> well, I was with people that I know okay, really okay. close to me. They, <laughs> they possibly. These people possibly even raised me. In their uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> I won't mention any names, mom and dad, but <laughs> but they're clapping on the one and three, right? Uh-huh. And, stuff. and so because there was no pulse, mm-hmm. there, was, there wasn't that in the music, and uh, and I'm like, hey, mom. <laughs> it's like, important. <laughs> and, uh, so, but I think that's why it's so. One reason it's so important just to keep that going. Like musically, it's obviously great, but if you're playing to a congregation of people and it's like collectively singing, collectively Mm -hmm. listening, that sort of thing. I think it's really important to kind of, for the drummer at least, to not interrupt that or to try and make it as easy as possible for everyone. Yeah, totally. You know, something, a song like this, you'll actually find that it's um, um, in a service, it's it's a moment where people are meditating, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, they're in deep thought and you do not want to disrupt them. I mean, Imagine if you were taking some quiet time by yourself and just sitting in a quiet room and some music is going and all of a sudden you just hear <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like it would disturb you. It would actually it would rock you. You yeah. you would not be able to concentrate anymore. And so again, you know, kind of going back to something I said earlier which was being sensitive. You want to be sensitive to what's actually happening in that moment and um, a few of these patterns, you know, knowing when to be aggressive and knowing when to lay back, um, yeah. and kind of like basically jumping on a few of these would actually get you kind of in the right direction to to playing in a song situation like that, where yeah. it's the it's that ballad, you know, it's that not power ballad until a certain point, but it's it's that sensitive moment in within a service or within a time of you know of the gathering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agree. Yeah, so what I like, I always recommend uh, you guys take like one pattern and something like that. But I'd really recommend uh, if you want to go through this lesson and for you edge members who are, you know, you're going to be here for all three of the series to go. Uh, he's he's spent a lot of time developing this series, and I think the best way to go through it is kind of sequentially how he's laid out the actual sheet music. So in, in this case, you know, practice uh, number one, and then go to number two, and, and um, practice them all in order. And I think. Uh, that's going to help you develop the feel that's necessary for you to then play to the, this song or this type of music or mm-hmm. stuff like that. But um, rather than like just saying, I'm going to learn that one fill, uh, that's, you're missing the point of the lesson, I think. The fills are, fills are really cool, and we have, we have 500 hours of lessons in drumming <laughs> now, many of them teaching fills. <laughs> but uh, I really think this, you guys could gain some really like uh, the, the feel, right? Develop those levels, and if you play and learn the, each of these grooves, um, you'll kind of get a sense for what it's like to be Larnell. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you guys, he, he is like severely under the weather and he's, you're, you're, a, you're a champ, man. Thanks, man, thank he's you. A total pro, came out <laughs> this morning, he like, he like he, I met him in the airport and he's like, this. I'm like, what is this? This is like a Toronto thing? Yeah, yeah. Want to shake my hand? <laughs> like, All right, that's fine. <laughs> he said he's sick, so I get it. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't want to infect anybody else. This is yeah. a cold, a head cold, but... That's all right. I never get sick. There you go. So you don't have to worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, and then tomorrow I'm going to be like... <laughs> hey guys, welcome to drum you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so there's lots of questions <clears throat> and stuff. I'm just going to kind of go through the questions. If you don't mind, maybe just like... Maybe play a little solo or something for like okay. one or two minutes. Yeah. And I'm going to kind of like sift through some of these, get some good ones. And then we're gonna, he's going to play you out with some music. Um, so if you have questions now, now's the time to get them in while well, he's entertaining us with yeah. a little soloage. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get here and then do some music. Nice. I totally put him on the spot, by the way. He had no idea. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Let's see what I can come up with here.
goes with the cowbell like that. <laughs> you must, you're really sick. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> awesome solo, man. Thank well, you. I went through the, the place where we store all the questions here, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start each one I want to ask. And I ended up starring pretty much all of them. <laughs> so that was, at least we got a, a solo out of it. So we're going to have to go uh, a little bit quick here. Okay. Um, this is from Malcolm. He says, hi, I, uh, I play at my local church and I was wondering if you have a tip or any tips for playing slow songs. I yeah. This is something I had trouble with too. So. Cool. Um, playing slow songs, the important thing to remember is that it's very easy to slow down. So you want to work with a metronome at home and be able to you know, play all the things that you would normally play in those situations to that click so that you can actually keep that momentum up, keep that forward motion going, and so that it doesn't drag and fall behind. Because again, in, in those services or in you know, those musical situations, if the drums are falling back, then it starts to feel lackadaisical, it starts to feel really lazy, and then it, it's, it becomes very noticeable to the ear, and people become distracted, distracted, and they're no longer in that particular frame of mind or in that flow or meditating as, mm -hmm. as they were before. So I would definitely say work with a click. I would also say, you know, pay attention to what the other musicians are doing and do what you can to support. So to support, to me, would mean laying down a very solid groove, um, again, keeping that flow going, but paying attention, you know, and, and being able to actually maybe hit a couple shots with each other, like a lot of eye communication, mm -hmm. um, and then working with dynamics. Those would be the, the things I would say for sure as mm -hmm. tips for playing yeah. slow songs at church. For me, what helped is if, if a lot of times, like, uh, what he's done is he's added a few different subdivisions in, especially that uh, first groove he played, where, where I think, and sub, uh, sometimes that could make it... Uh, easier to not speed up or to keep that forward motion mm -hmm. going. So I would say really work on like exercise that's number one and two uh, with that right hand pattern at a Absolutely. very slow tempo. Yeah. Is that song at like 70 or, or 65? Um, it's like it? about 63, 65, okay. yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's great. Uh, this one's from Jake C. He says, Mr. Lewis, awesome lesson and thanks for coming out. Um, is that your Yamaha kit and what series are they? Ooh. I want it. <laughs> Where's Sean Brown? Sean Brown, I want it. I want he it. might be watching. I know. know. I love you, Sean. <laughs> um, this, if you're not familiar with it, and you should check it out online, mm -hmm. it's the new live custom oak. Um, it's basically a newer version of the oak kit that Yamaha has just recently put out, which I'm I'm really starting to get it, get it custom to and love. You know the, the shell depths and the. Uh, the finishes are crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, the heads I have on here right now are just uh, clear G2s and um, clear G1s on the bottom. I wanted to try and allow the drums to ring out as much as possible. Yeah. They do not belong to me, so. They were lent to us for yeah, this, uh, for this, this, this session here. So. Yeah, I believe right. the difference between these old customs and the, or these live customs mm -hmm. and the old customs with the shell uh, with, yeah, right? the, like the, the, the amount of ply, the thickness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I'm not exactly sure, but I think the original oak customs were like super lively, um, mm -hmm. and they wanted to may maybe like rein it in a tiny bit. Yeah, so just, they just a little bit, just a little more control, yeah. tighter sound, but still yeah. the the body and presence of that darker yeah. oak wood that you'd normally get. Yeah, we love it. Every time we've had uh, an oak kit in here, I, we, I really want one now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is from uh, Missionary Beats. It says, I'm truly enjoying this lesson mostly because gospel is my genre. My question is for Mr. Lewis, what's your favorite gospel song to play and why? Ooh. I know it's a hard one. Oh, that is so hard. Oh, Mr. Beats, come on. You can't do that to me. <laughs> not on live national tele well, it's not television. But it's the same thing. You know yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, man, it's going to sound generic or cliche, but I really just enjoy playing songs that feel good. You know, um, I like the slower stuff. I like the more up-tempo stuff because they all do, do, do different things. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to pick a moment or a song, it might just be a, a chorus of some sort that is really upbeat that allows me to really lay into the snare drum like two and four, mm -hmm. you know, the nice like 90 BPM, 95 BPM tune. It could be anything to, to be honest at that point, but 
Okay. Yeah, that's the best I could do, man. <laughs> <laughs> this next question is from Sean Boy, and you have two questions, but I'm just going to ask one. It's going to cost you double to get a second question. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you keep uh, from feeling stale or worn down? He says he's coming to the point in his ability where he, uh, I feel like I hit a wall and can't get my desire to learn back. I know that most musicians go through this, but uh, what have you done personally to break through? Mm. Um, I definitely went through this. Um, I absolutely had moments where I didn't like what I was hearing out of myself and um, anything that I created, just definitely perfect words, felt stale. Mm -hmm. What I did was I started to hang around with a, you know, a couple of my friends and just kind of listen to what they were listening to. I took a break from the drums um, and just started to listen to music and different styles of music, you know? And then when I had a chance to just get back in I was able to approach it with a completely clear mind and a different approach altogether. And uh, I think it's just, you just need a break if that's the case, man. Yeah. And let, I, I think the tip about listening to a different style of music is going to help you think in a different mindset. So mm -hmm. that's a great tip. Yeah, but don't lose the love. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, this is from Nicola. Also asked two questions, but I can just get to one. He says, if you were to give us one tip, what would it be? Mm tip would be to listen because what you do on the drums should reflect what's happening in the band in any musical situation. So listen. Listen to know what the bass player is playing and be able to sing it. Know what the guitar player is playing and be able to support it. Um, pay attention and just listen is the one tip I would definitely yeah. give cool. to everyone. Great tip. Uh, this is from Gil Flores. Gil's an awesome Drumeo Edge member. He nice. says, uh, hey, Larnell, nice to have you. Uh, nice to have you too, Jared. <laughs> it sounded like... Uh, uh, Larnell, I would uh, think that inspiration is a big part of your music. What kind of things do you do to inspire people you play with, and what do they do that inspires you? Smile. Smile. Smile and have fun. Yeah. Because... To me, the point of what I'm doing is, uh, if you want to look at this as being an entertainer, for example, people don't come from a long day of work to be, you know, to a venue or to a performance mm -hmm. to to sit there and be, you know, feeling you know, to feel devastated or to feel sadder than they actually were when they got there. Um, for me, it's about, you know, just pushing out that joy or just showing people the joy that I have for this instrument and that musical situation and hope that it's infectious enough to lift them up enough to have a good day. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, keep on going. Lots of questions about gear and, and so you guys, we're not going to go too much into gear today. Uh, we, will, we can do that more tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which um, means you got to come back. <laughs> you got to come back. Uh, this one's from J.G. Videra. And uh, he says, got so happy seeing you play French grip. How, does, how do you practice the flying finger technique? He's currently working on that, and is that an, any issue? He says, sometimes the back of his hand starts to hurt, and I've read that there can be a lot of physical problems, so how do I do it right? And he says, thank you, this is the first time I actually came to a live lesson loving it so far. Oh, nice, cool. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah. And um, when it comes to grip, you know, I found that getting the most amount of follow through with your stick, um, depending on where you are on the drum kit, to me is what makes the most amount of sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm kind of coming at the snare like this, or if I'm playing the ride cymbal like this, you know, okay. kind of uh, having a, a short memory lapse in terms of French. And yeah, French, it's the, like it's the, it's the thumbs up. You do it exactly. a ton. Yeah. And so uh, you were doing it like, especially, uh, you do it a lot on the, on the snare to the high tom, and then down yeah. here is when you turn. Because I'm studying you. Yeah, man. and get power. <laughs> yeah. You get power, right? Yeah, for me, I, I did a lot of, um, you know, I mean, if you want to get into, I don't know if anyone can see this. Yeah, this is a great ex exercise. So, like, that. you know, like. You have this camera right here, too, yeah, if you want. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah. You can see what's going on here. Um, you can work your individual fingers as well, just like only the three outside of the, the fulcrum, obviously. Yeah. And then you could really utilize that when, you know. And is that practice, something you practiced a lot? It's something that I would use to warm up with. Okay. You know, definitely. Um, between my brother and I, he's, he's definitely like a big French grip yeah. buff. And um, <clears throat> when, it can, when it comes to just playing the snare, yeah, like it just it feels natural to, 
to do a lot of my rudiments because I do rely on rely on finger and bounce yeah. when I'm like doing a lot of like stick work on the snare. Mm -hmm. But when I really need to just get that, uh, 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 okay. you know, <laughs> that, that sound, right? You heard it? Yeah. Blue, blue speakers. Um, you know, resort to the other grip. But I would just say techniques are there to allow you to be able to play with efficiency, like to, to, to be able to disperse your energy properly and not injure yourself. So, you know, if you are injuring yourself when you're doing a lot of these things, just kind of take a second look at what's going on. I'm yeah. pretty sure there's like a lot of material <clears throat> online. Yeah, get someone to look at it if you can. Um, mm -hmm. Like here, Jomeo, you're allowed to submit, you can submit a video and we'll just look at it and be like, okay, do this, do this. Um, get a private teacher is always good because they can just like, you know, turn your hand and say, don't, the good ones. There's some uh, teachers that don't un understand much about grip or like what, how to not injure yourself. And so make sure you get someone that knows what they're talking about. Um, this one's from Bald Eagle. And it says, Mr. Larnell, I play with different, a lot with different songs like Kim Walker, Martin Smith, and Hillsong. Is that a good idea to play along with? If so, what drum covers, sh what gr drum covers should I listen to? Um, within the gospel realm, just listen to as much as you can. Um, inspirational, you know, Christian contemporary. Listen to as much of it as you can. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great idea to play along to that Hillsong, like to Hillsong's music. Um, if you're not familiar with Hillsong's, they are a Christian contemporary group you can check out. Um, they border a little more on, on the uh, contemporary rock yeah. side of things, I guess you could say. And... Um, you know, especially if you're going to be playing a lot of that music in your church or crusades or whatever the event or situation is, you want to get the feel. And so if you're going to, you know, play in a band like a James Brown cover band, you'd need to play along to those tracks to really be able to get that feel down. And I would definitely say what you're doing for that is, is perfect. Um, other than that, you know, I would say branch out to a little more of the gospel. Um, like uh, Israel Houghton, I'm pretty f sure you're familiar with Israel Houghton. Um, uh, Kirk Franklin, again, modern. Uh, a drummer, awesome drummer named Calvin Rogers, actually, is the musical director for Fred Hammond. So he's another artist you can check out as well. Cool. This one's from April Singer. Can you compare gospel-style music to contemporary praise and worship? What's the difference? Um, contemporary praise and worship, I, I really feel that it's... If, if we're going to talk about comparing it, I feel that it's centered around you know, more of what's happening with the guitar, a little more, um, even just the keys that they choose, like, you know, open A's, open E's. Um, like the gospel music coming from, you know, that American Pentecostal gospel sound um, just kind of sits in like a, a funkier zone in terms of its influences, you know, like, um, I mean, there's Motown, yeah. there's James Brown, um, there's a lot of jazz artists that have influenced gospel mu music and vice versa um, when it comes to gospel. Um, but then when you're looking at contemporary music, again, um, it it's kind of has a little more of a rock edge, a little more of a, yeah. like an open a guitar or a couple of guitars. I would say on. it's straighter. Like, yeah. For, you know, just more like, j -j 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 that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, totally. You don't hear that in, in the, the gospel music, like a lot of stuff that you're playing. Developing. Mm -hmm, it's... Mm -hmm. it's yeah, I don't even know how to how to place it. And then you have some people who actually mix the two, so you might yeah. you might get the j -j 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 -j, like some like really funky kind of backbeat thing going. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on the artist, you know. Cool. Okay, last question, and sorry for those who uh, we missed. Uh, if you guys, uh, like I said, the next lesson with Larnell, we'll definitely get to every single question and, the, and every um, every single one we do with, with just the edge members only, just because there's too many to handle. Uh, this is from Morty Shanks, 16. Uh, can you please show me the one rudiment or exercise that has helped you develop your insane groove? Many thanks, and see you tomorrow. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's not one, man. I, it, if it was one, I would bottle it. And I don't know so what I would do after I bottle it, but you could figure that one out. But um, when it comes to just working on groove, I mean... Rudiments are a grouping of stickings, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I did a paradiddle groove, it, I'm making, or a, a paradiddle pattern on the drums, I'm making a groove. Um, so really it's about your ears and it's about making your limbs sync up 
but also adding the necessary swing or the um, necessary push-pull for this pattern to groove, you know, a groove, a pocket is, is something that you sit inside of, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, driving on the road and there's a bunch of grooves in the road or bumps in the road or whatnot, potholes, like it's, it's, the, it's the consistency of it or just how deep you are inside of each stroke in terms of your pacing. It's how you pace those strokes is what will create the groove. And it's the space between the notes that also really help to make things feel mm -hmm. good. So I can't nail it down to one rudiment. I would just say just, you got to use your ears and you got to find music to copy. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. No problem. One of these. <laughs> 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 I get sick. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. For you here who are not an Edge member, we'd absolutely love to have you. No pressure, but because uh, we do this every Monday and we offer it as a free service to the community. Um, just to kind of give you a taste test of what it's like to be a Drumeo Edge member. But if you want more information on Drumeo Edge, just go to drumeoedge.com and there's a whole, um, the whole write-up and video trailer and you can kind of see what it's, what, uh, all the kind of cool stuff we do. This is one very, very, obviously the most important element. And uh, it's been a blast having you out here. So he's going to play us out. Cool. And I'm going to jet out of the room. But thank you all so much for allowing me to sit in and learn as well. And uh, we'll be back soon. Probably just hit up the, the same song. Yeah. Yeah.